Hey yo, I'm Solicis Fox here, and right now I'm gonna be doing something just for you guys. Today we're gonna be I'm gonna be showing you seven different tricks, tips, and treats for all you new finger robot creators out there. For all the people out there who want to create their own finger robot, Denkaropa alternate universes, and all that crap, I'll be giving you seven different ways you can make your killing game in tip top shape. For this video, I'll be going into very specific details on the do's and don'ts on what you should and shouldn't do when making a Fang and Ropa game, or lists of characters, people's plots, and all that crap. Confused yet? So am I. It'd be easier if we just get into it right now, so without further ado, let's get started, shall we? For my first item on the list, it's going to be talents and traits. For this, it's gonna be a little on the character of the side. So first up, if you're a Fang and Ropa creator, you definitely want to listen to this. So when you're creating their, your characters, the first things you want to know about is their talents and their traits, their characteristics, their personality, the idea of what they are. First up, what you want to do. What you want to do, if it depends on what kind of universe you're doing. If you're doing the same universe as the actual Hope's Peak Academy, Danganronpa universe, that that kind of crap, then you definitely want some of the following. You want a lucky student a part of your cast, because in each year of the actual Danganronpa, they definitely had a a lucky student. So if you don't have one, then and you're part of the Host Peak Academy universe, then you definitely want to put a lucky one. You also want to put a detective in there. If you all know already, in each of the actual Ding and Ropa games from Spike Chunsoft, they had a detective in every single game. First one was Kyoko, oh, spoilers, but it doesn't matter if you're making a Fang and Ropa game, then you obviously played and watched the entire games. The second one is um, Hajime. Because since he had every single talent, because of the whole cultivation program, because he technically had every single ta talent, since they researched the detective, Hajime technically has the detective talent as well. So that's part of the second game. The third game was obviously Shuichi. So you probably want a detective in there if you want along the lines of cliches. But you don't have to, it's just a incentive in there. And then you definitely want question mark person. You want someone who you don't know the talent of, some people don't know the talent of, or they don't know their own, or they refuse to share it. You definitely want to create mystery in there. If you don't create mystery in there, it definitely ruins the Danganronpa vibe, and it creates a less interesting cast, so to speak. If you have a question mark, they could be anything, and they definitely might be very important to the subject. So it'd be a really good addition to the cast. So you definitely want to put a unknown talent based character in there as well. As for their traits, you definitely want them to go along the lines of their actual talent. For say if they're I don't let's say the ultimate YouTuber, they gotta have a personality and traits of very spunky, very like energetic and all oh, very YouTuber. -y. If they're let's say the ultimate um water conservative or something, they would definitely very picky, very like bossy, and very like nature wise, or very like innovative and bro dude, or very hippie, maybe. So it's gotta be very stereotypical their talent to be implemented to their things, because that's what they are. Stereotypes in their talents is what makes up most of the Ding and Ropa casts. Unless you wanna put a curveball or very contradictory um, cast, then that'd be pretty fine. Just make sure you don't put all the same, all the like very similar personalities, you definitely want a wide variety. Having one or two of the same personalities is fine, because they also create a good, um, you know, ship for it, so to say. But you definitely want to create a very variety of personalities out there. This is very key in creating a cast, because if you want to entice the audience, then you definitely want a very unique cast. A very peculiar, very good, and very spicy, so to say, cast of characters and students. 
You want the audience to get enticed to them based off their personalities and talents. Because when you actually start the killing game, once they get clingy to the actual character, then you kill them off. That's what makes a good dang and rubber game. People like or really hate the characters, they want to see someone die, they want to see someone live. That's what a character is. And pull it off, the most important thing you gotta do is their personality and talents. The second thing I want to go over it is character art. I could lump this in with the first entry of Talents of Trades, but this covers a lot of stuff. You want to know what character art. They're the most defining and pinnacle of each cast. Behind the talents and traits, it's also very extremely important. You want the characters to look like the talents. You want the characters to be very defining, very unique. And a lot of problems I see is that a lot of people don't appreciate it. Because I've seen a bunch in my time, a lot of character art, a lot of people accuse a lot of creators of tracing. And that confuses me a lot because since just because um, new created um, create created characters share the same poses of other characters from the actual games, people accuse them of tracing, even though it's actually completely different in size and shape. Uh, for all those people who accuse people of tracing, it's kind of hard to actually create your own poses. A lot of people will share the same poses whether it's in the actual game or a fan made game. A lot of people will raise their hand up, a lot of people would make the same face or make the same hand gestures. So it's kind of hard to create your own like say faces for the character arts because a lot of people share the same emotions. So when people accuse someone of tracing and don't have a lot of proof to back it up, it's kind of really critical on them and it's really defining. So if people accuse you of tracing, then you definitely... something... okay. If you're accused of tracing, don't take it too much to the heart. A lot of it is just based off too much insight into the things and not enough appreciation of the actual art. So if people accuse you of tracing, just move on. Just debunk their thoughts really quickly and then move on. The next thing you want to do for your actual character arts, you definitely want to be defining. Not plain, but also very unique. You want your characters to really explain themselves, very stand out above the others. I've seen some finger ropas where it's just like all the characters look kind of plain. They do look like the part, like if they're like a sheriff, they definitely have those hats and heels and cowboy stuff, but it wasn't really defining, it wasn't spaz, it wasn't ultimate, like clothes. And then other finger ropas would have like, I'm just gonna put out there ultimate bomber from Fairy Finger Ropa or yeah, and then it's just very defining, very unique, very crazy. It's just really good art. It's very defining. Uh, no one else would probably think about it. It's really crazy. Something like that. You don't have to have for every character. There calls to be a plain characters or a few plain characters in there, but you definitely want some very defining arts in there as well. Number three, do not, I repeat, do not overshare your finger ropa too early. I cannot express this enough on how really exposed my eyes can be when just looking at these freshly new finger ropas that are not ready at all, but people are already sharing them on Discord. I understand that people want to share them, get their word out, probably like share it on other social medias and just get the word out there, bring up their fan base a little bit, but there is such a thing as oversharing too much. Uh, I have an example. It's not exactly something that would happen. I saw it once before it happened. This person took the opportunity to share all their character arts in like a very small Discord server for a, fang and rope, a very small Fang and Ropa, probably like a few dozen people. So they put in their finger up all, of all their characters, all their traits, onto like the whole list. 
of like a specific chat section and then someone came along and stole all of it he actually stole it and reposted it on his own page on a on a way bigger finger ropa page and then he got some a lot of credit for it and when the the actual creator got really angry and fought a lot for it for for it back so he tried getting it back and he was obviously successfully successful he got credit for it and a lot of people acknowledge him but for it to be stolen is kind of a stretch it's because you've overshared too early on a very small one there's if you share on your own page and spread the word on there it'd be pretty good but if you overshare on a very less discreet and very less appreciative servers and chats then it kind of downgrades you a little bit it also is set up for a lot of unmotivation like a lot of depressing um thoughts doing towards you i've seen the community already it's actually pretty good for finger robots a lot of people don't criticize them they actually like really enthusiastic about it. it's like hey that's pretty good art and stuff but not a lot of people would talk about it so if you like put down some art in the chat section and then no one talks about it, you get pretty demotivated a lot it's not interesting enough to encapture the audience and so people a lot of um, creators actually stop creating their finger robots because their oversharing actually demotivates them from creating it more and actually sharing more even though the community is actually ready for it but it was just a, the wrong place and the wrong time to place it somewhere and one other thing you shouldn't do too early is the early casting and early creation of specific things for example if you were to you just started and you get you're getting a really good fan base going and stuff you have your own page on discord a bunch of followers and stuff but then you decide to create like a, a casting call like I've seen some I'm not gonna name specifically but some are actually doing casting calls but it's kind of a little too early we don't know a lot about them we haven't seen any trailers about them besides um probably like a few character introductions but we don't know a lot about them so it's kind of hard to actually do casting calls and since the fan base is too small and there's also other things going at the same time and if you're not ready for it you can be bombarded by way too much and that kind of stresses people out and when they're not ready for it they crumble and the project starts getting worse and worse and eventually crashes like sp very specific uh i think dang it rubble blowback they got really pressured the reason they got canceled i'm pretty sure i read this somewhere they got extremely pressured and they didn't have a lot of time on their hands and since they did stuff a little too early they couldn't a lot of things happen I think probably oh, some voice actors were able to quit because they weren't interested anymore and then a lot of artists got demotivated and then the actual creator just like stopped and then that was the end of Dinger Up a Blowback it was a really good series going on but then they just had to stop demotivated all because of oversharing so what you don't want to do is overshare too early you can still share you can share early you can all share on your own page on the right time at the right place but you should definitely keep an eye out on how much you're sharing and all that crap blah blah number four on this list is that you definitely need to have a plan b a plan b can mean a lot of different things in your case but the first thing i'll bring up is the storyline you want a plan b storyline if you're already creating one and you already have the story planned out all the characters all the twists and turns all the executions all the deaths all the survivors the mastermind all that crap planned out that's plan a plan b is when you're actually creating stuff you're already doing the voice acting you're already doing the art and you're going through the story and then something happens either you, something intriguing happens and you see that one of the story plots are just doesn't fit well or you get some advice from other creators that 
might want to change something for you and you see a better like alternative to the story, and then you can switch back to plan B, which is probably better. So you don't stick to one plan, you definitely want two plans, maybe even three. You definitely want different scenarios. Scenarios. You definitely want different scenarios and plots just in case something intriguing happens. Another plan B can apply to um, casting calls. In case someone quits, or one of the voice actors like can't do it anymore because of various reasons, or they just fall behind and you really need to keep going, you definitely need a plan B for that. Backup at least. So at least keep a contact in for the, the, a second voice actor in case one of them's gone. Because and one of the things that happened with um, you already know. What were they called? Where's my name? For Dinger of Rebirth voices, one of the voice actors uh, actually disappeared from the, yeah, from the scene. And so they had to replace the Yumu. Uh, was it Yumu? They had, yeah, they had to replace uh, what you call it? No, it wasn't Yumu. Is it Kazuma? No, Aruma. They had to replace Aruma, his voice actor, because something happened to the original. So they had to bring back something, but it was actually it took a very long progress and a hindrance on their actual project. And so since they fell behind, a lot of things happened, and since they didn't have a plan B, they had to they wasted a lot of time. Actually getting their stuff rolling and stuff, even though it's just one voice actor, a lot of things they could have done, they could have focused on, which would have been better for them. Number five, get a team, get advice. I gotta stress this out for a lot of you people. Fang and Ropa Games is not a solo act. You're definitely going to need a team. Whether it's online, either it's from friends or even other Fang and Ropa Creators, you definitely need a team of collaborators with you, whether because you're going to be doing a lot of things voice acting, art, story, editing, other a bunch of stuff. You definitely can't do this by yourself. A lot of people have a lot of uh, artists collaborating with them, helping them do the art, helping them create stuff together. You definitely need an editor, you need a, someone to create music if you're into that kind of stuff and trying to create your own music, you can always try to hit someone up or try and create your own while other people are doing the main stuff for you. But you definitely can't do this alone. Getting a team is very important when you're creating a Fang of Ropa game or whatever story, whatever you want to do. It creates less stress for you and it'll be able to create stuff way faster on a, on a basis. Second thing is that you want advice. Like how I'm getting advice to you for creating a game, you need also get advice from other Fang and Ropa creators. In Discord servers, there's definitely Ask the Staffs for several Fang and Ropa games, and they can actually give you a lot of advice on how to actually go on with creating a Fang and Ropa game, and not just me, and not just random people. These are actually professionals who actually know how to do stuff. People who have experience actually creating stuff is actually really give good advice when creating a game, whether it's telling you how to create a really good casting goal, how to create good art, how to create a good story, which um, softwares they use, what kind of artists they recommend, or several stuff they had to do in order to like create several scenes and stuff or how long it takes to do stuff you definitely want advice you want a team you want advice because you want to do this quickly you want your stuff to get out there lickety splickety very out there very fast because that's what a lot of finger rupas people want to do a lot of finger rupa creators just want their stuff out there get noticed as quickly as possible and then build up that tension that motivation, that inspiration for the viewers and fans to like watch, get enticed into all that stuff, you know? 
Speaking of fans, number six is that you had to communicate with the community. This is a really easy thing to do, although a lot of people aren't doing it correctly. Communicating with the community is simply just like talking to them. Updates, progress, spread awareness of your actual fan game Ropa. Spreading awareness is just pretty easy, just like telling on social media. Just like, oh, look at my finger Europa, Dang Europa, um, for despair and hope, whatever you call it. And just, you know, just explain what it is. Just tell your characters, all bios, art, whatever. Oh, don't overshare too early, all that crap. But the problem is, is keeping that fan base. You want to keep updating all the time. You want to communicate with the community a lot because if you are on standby a while and you don't have anyone to like talk to them to your fans to all the people who are interested in the Danganronpa or Fangaropa you start losing interest your increase in your fan base starts decreasing continually talking with everyone is a really good way to be on equal terms Keep talking about updates, all the progress you're making. Telling them all this gives them a lot of really tension building up, just really hyped for what is about to come. They can talk with you, they can like spread more awareness to other Fangaropas. It builds a better fan base than not talking to them. You don't have to talk to them like 24 7. You don't even have to update every single day. Just being able to have someone talk to them, ask the staff section have a discord have a twitter have a tumblr have an instagram whatever have any social media that communicates them with the best will be really good for you not just fan wise but also socially wise it gives you more confidence in sort of way so getting more confidence and all that crap getting advice just all that helps you in the long run and keeps you motivating for going forward and keeps them from watching you until the very end. Of course, since these things take time, the seventh thing that you gotta watch out for is patience. Evidently, since Fingeropa doesn't isn't built in, Rome wasn't built in one day, Fingeropas will take an extremely long time to actually start getting some actual videos and images into there. So, and it takes a while, since it takes a while, the viewers and audience actually might get a little restless about these sort of things. They start pressuring you to be like, when is it going to come out? I oh, can't wait. Why is it taking so long? All that crap. That gives you more tension, a lot more stressed out. It makes you want to rush a bit more. But I gotta tell you, you gotta be more patient. If you start rushing things because the community starts telling you to, Things get sloppy. You oversight little things, you get a little impatient towards your fellow artists and collaborators and then it just makes the project a little and more a bit uh, just not tip top shape and that's not what we're looking for here. We want a good art, we want a good story, we want a good finger rope of cast, a lot of all that crap. And this takes a while. Like, you know, a lot of finger robots are already creating. I don't think I've seen a single finger robot that fully finished, except I think another Danger Robot Another, or whatever it was called. No, Super Danger Robot 1. I think that's finished, but it's not like fully finished since it's the second game, and then there's Reaper Voices. The finger robots haven't even finished yet, and it took a while for them to actually start doing the things. So it, it takes a lot of time and it requires a lot of patience from them and their audience to actually get stuff around. So being able to have patience is very key in creating a Fang Europa. The art takes a long time. The story could be done in a little bit but the voice acting and getting the voice actors to say anything or actually getting voice actors will take a lot longer and then editing all that takes even longer 
So in that order, you definitely need people for all those things. Art is very crucial, but so is the editing and the voice acting. So if you want to get stuff down, you definitely want more people, but you definitely still want patience. And you still have to talk to the community on how long it'll take. You definitely want to give them a little patience, give them a little teasers as well. So they feel like they feel fed and quenched when until that time actually comes to where you actually start the videos and actually start the story. That's all the tips, tricks, and treats I have for you today. It was a little very confusing. Um, I'm not reading re really reading a script right now. I'm just like, it's just everything's popping to my mind all of a sudden. So it's really complicated, very messed up, just very confusing, but it's mainly for all the finger ropa creators if you really want to create a finger ropa then definitely ch if you have any questions about it and stuff like that you can ask me in the comments or something just hit me on social media and then just ask me about it because this video doesn't exactly stress out everything i wanted to say it sounded the plot sounded a lot better in my head than it actually is when actually making the video I've created some um, finger ropas in my past. I haven't actually done the art, but I've created the stories. I created the um, peep, the characters, the talents, the storylines, backup, all that crap before. So if you have any questions about stuff, you can ask me. I know a lot. If it's just it doesn't have to be me, you can also ask other finger ropa creators or just peep, creators in general. It doesn't have to be finger ropa related. Creators are actually really good with um, helping out creating actual new games or just alternate universes and fangaropas, fandom games, all that crap. So if you have any advice, don't be afraid to ask people. The community is actually really nice no matter where you go, as long as you don't hit up the wrong people at the wrong time. Also if you're already created one and you want my personal opinion on it, just Hit me up somewhere, whatever, social media, whatever, comments, and then I can take a look at it, give you some advice. And I, pr I give pretty good advice if I do say so myself. Honest opinion, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what you can improve, and what looks good and what doesn't look good. I could be of help to you, so don't be afraid to share them. You can also share it to other people as well. Getting other people to acknowledge your existence feels pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you for watching the video. If it wasn't really helpful, I'm sorry. This is just like really stressful on these past few days. So I just need to get another video out there. And shout out to all the finger ropas already out there, giving me really good uh, inspiration for making this video. I want to help out the community. This is the best I can do, sadly. So sorry if this. It was very confusing and very long and a complete waste of your time. So, uh, if you have anything you want to say, anything you want to talk about, speculations on the past videos I had, or anything about Finger Robots related to this video, or anything, something wrong with what I've said, <clears throat> anything wrong that I've said, you can put it down in the comments and completely destroy my hopes of making. Videos in the future, it's fine. I can take it in, so don't be afraid to express yourself and all that crap. It'd be good practice for the future if you actually create Finger Ropa. I'd be pretty interested in actually hearing your ideas. And that said, I guess I got nothing else to say, so I bid you that's farewell. <laughs>